The business for locally made bags is a thriving trade in Ghana, providing livelihood for thousands of people across the country. We begin our journey at one of the bustling markets in Accra, the Kwame Nkrumah Art Center, where vendors display their wares. The scene is lively, colorful, and full of activity as vendors call out to potential customers and shoppers hackle over prices. As we walk through the center, we stop to speak to a few of the vendors. They share their stories of how they got into the trade and the challenges they face in competitive markets, particularly with foreign and second-hand products. One vendor tells us about his business and experience selling these products. This is the product I sell. African wear. Yeah, we have the African wear. We have the waist beads. We have the anklets. Yeah, we have the beads. We have the bags. So anything concerned about African products, that's what I sell over here. So I think for now, the business is upside, somehow slow. Yeah, but it's a season business. Yeah, that's how it works. For the sense of the bag, it moves, but not like in hurry. Yeah, maybe a customer will, will enter in, or maybe will order for one or two, sometimes one, sometimes maybe none, or maybe we take a dress. Yeah. So for the bag aspect, it moves, but not in a fast way. The most people that they buy our products is from the African Americans. When they buy into the market, it's crazy. Yeah, the market moves very fast, and everybody enjoys how. They purchase the product as well. Yeah. But they are the ones make us get, I mean, the purchasing power. Yeah. As we delve deep into the world of handmade bags in Ghana, we come to understand the intricacy and skill involved in creating these pieces. In this scene, we take a close look at the products themselves, showcasing the unique and beautiful craftsmanship of local artisans. Made in Ghana is a big brand. It's a huge brand. Buyers have become very conscious and then they want to sort of buy knowing that they are helping something or helping someone. So there's, a, there's really market available. Just knowing your um, target market, developing a niche, trying to do something to suit your customers. That is what will, will help us. It's clear that the level of skill and craftsmanship involved in creating these pieces is second to none. From the traditional design that reflects Ghanaian culture to the modern takes on these classics, local artisans are truly master of their crafts. I remember first the things we used to sew back and now we use different things because first we used to take a skirt lining for our bags but now I can see now we are using PVC for the inside, the lining and we have different lining that we use polyester that we use for the lining too so the things already have changed and something like this the jeep first we are not using this back uh, this fabric for back i'm the one that just sit down i see that if you use this one with the african print it will look nice on it so i try one then my customers like it and i started using it and the jeans the jeans fabric uh, the jeans fabric example like this, I use it for a lot of bags. As we continue on the journey into the world of Ghanaian craftsmanship, we discover that the artisans who make these bags face many challenges, from lack of funding to competition from cheaper, mass-produced imports. These artisans struggle to stay afloat in a rapidly challenging industry. But first, let's look at how they found themselves in this all-important business. The when I finished SSS, I was in the house trying to, you know, sometimes it's hard, it's not easy, but I was in the house doing small, small. Then my brother came from this and then he told me that if I could do it, then he would help me to find the machine and stuff like that. So it's my brother who helped me to get the machine and everything. The challenges we have a lot, because you see this work, it's not only one person that do it in Ghana here. When you go to social media right now, you find a lot of people sewing bags. But we still we get our customers that we sell our product to. So it depends how quality your work is. Just like I saw one bag, this bag for uh, one white woman. She take it to US. She just text me, that was the day before yesterday, that the, the, the son want to marry. So they need 100 pieces of this. And we just chat, we chat the price, everything. So I just have to go and get the fabric. 
and produce and ship it to them. The other challenges is yeah, that uh, others will try to steal your designs from you. You can do your bag like there's something that you, you sit alone and think and create it. Someone will just go and copy it and be doing it. If they can help us with the copywriting, I think it will help us a lot because everyone has to also think and bring new things. You don't have to wait for someone to bring his design then you copy it. It will not help. Because now when you buy the material like 25 CDs a yard, then they form like 30 CDs or 40 CDs. But when I finish before, if I buy like material 7 CDs, then I finish and I sell it 50 CDs. I know the balloons, I will get something small. But right now, maybe the test I can buy like 100 CDs. So when I finish and sell the bag is 150 or 200 CDs, you can't sell it because there is money, there is no business, you see. Now, we get a rare behind the scene look at the making of handmade bags. We see artisans in action, crafting each piece with care of precision. Their tools and techniques have been passed down through generations. They take pride in their work, knowing that each item they create is a unique expression of their craft. We use a lot of items to do our bag because we have the floor and the cardboard and other things. We have uh, the PVC, which is the lining, and we still use polyester. So our products, we use a lot of fabrics to do it. Example like this bag, you first cut the cardboard, you join the leather with the fabric, then after you put the inside lining, you make sure you cut the bundle how you want it, then you fix it. Any design that I have here, I have it fabric or it material that I use. Example like this, I took a, a yellow leather and I make sure that the fabric I will use will match with the leather. And the down, put the, uh, put the stockers and it's all good. So it match with the color that I'm using. The artisans of Ghana take great pride in their craft. As we have seen, each piece they create is a unique expression of their skill and artistry. From the careful stitching to the precision cutting, every detail is considered and executed with care. Join us as we continue to explore the world of handmade bag in Ghana and the remarkable story of the artisans who make them. As we explore the world of handmade bags in Ghana, it's clear that local artisans face many challenges in breaking through the international market. We hear from the industry experts who shed light on the obstacles that these craftsmen face. It is the platform, is social media, is internet. The government can go out there, look for business for us, but how, how can you be reached without taking a plane? It is social media, it is the internet. So I would just say, maybe for any business, at least, you should have some footprints on the, on the internet. If not by registering, showing your company's location on Google Map, showing where you are, and there should be some activity online, you know, in a positive way, activity, good publicity to help your business. So the only way is through the internet, is through having an online presence so that yeah, you're, you may be in Medina, but someone in, in London can see you. You should be seen so that you would, you would get bias. No matter when they come and they see our things, they take a picture and go and do a duplicate. But because we, we are very limited, we cannot challenge them. That is our major challenge. This is our own and we have to demonstrate our own to the world. And the, and the world also like our culture a lot. So we appeal to the government to promote our uh, culture. Breaking through the international market is not an easy task, but with hard work, dedication, and the right support, Ghana's handmade bags can truly shine on the global stage. As the demand for locally made bags grows, there is a need to modernize the production process. We are here at the workshop at the Accra Art Center to see how industry professionals are tackling this challenge. You know, most of the customers, they, they want different things. You can't use all African fabric for one bag, even though you can do, but you just have to let it, because most people don't wear African print uh, uh, dresses. Some come with the foreign dresses, but something like this, even if the African fabric is that small, it can go with a coat or something different. 
You understand? That's why we just try to make something different. It's not that but we can do the whole thing in Africa. Try to make our designs unique. We mix up our local prints with leather. And if you see this anywhere in the world, you know that ah, this, this must be African. If you are very, um, if you are into local fabrics, you would know, you would know where this bag is coming from, even without our label here. So this bag, we've named it um, Koyo. Now this one here is also matte cloth. This one is called Didi. This, this bag here is also called um, Oba because it's very feminine. You can see the shapes and all that. And then we've used Kente locally made in Kumase to make this one. There's a long strap, but it's inside the bag. And this one is named Fufu. This one is called Fufu. I named it after my auntie. She's very cute like this bag. <laughs> so that's why this one is called Fufu. And you can see this is Kente fabric hand woven. This is from the Volta region actually. So we try to be intentional. We try to be um, unique in our selection of raw materials and that's what I believe helps us to stand out. As Ghana's fashion industry grows, modernizing the production process is crucial in ensuring that locally made bags and shoes can compete with international brands through collaborations between industry professionals and local artisans. Ghanaian craftsmanship is being brought to a global stage. As we continue on the evolution of the handmade bags in Ghana, we shift our focus the global potential of this locally made product. We speak to an expert who shares his insight on how these local breeds can compete with international brands and break into global markets. Oh, as for this business, it has a future, but the government needs to involve itself. Once again, I'll say, even here, they want to eject us from here. They want to eject us from here to Kaokuni, which is something not pleased with some of us. But what will you do? We don't have anything to say because of the marine drive project that they want to do here. So, government is not taking much necessary because looking at, we also support the growth of the country in terms of. Uh, Tourism, we support a lot, but government is not helping us in any way. As we come towards the end of our journey exploring the evolution of handmade bags in Ghana, we turn our focus to the future. We speak with experts and artisans alike to understand their vision and hope for the industry. We need more machines and other things. You see, when you come here, there's not a lot of uh, stuff here, like bags here. If there was money, I think I can produce a lot of things. The little I can say to them is to be positive-minded, optimistic, hopeful, because it helps. Starting a business takes a lot. It takes a lot of endurance. And it is not, you know, sometimes people, it's, it is not just about the money. It, it takes time to build a business. We're talking about European brands that are over 100 years, that people want to be associated with now, but they have gone through the mill. So for a young person who has the dream of designing something or who has that plan, should just be focused, be persistent, you know, allow yourself to go through the mill, don't be in a rush. It's good for you to also have something that you like, your homework or something like that. So if you are to come into the business, you, do not, you have to fifth grade income. You know. It's not something that is a bad thing. You know. So if you can, it can help you do anything that you want to do. As we end our journey through the evolution of handmade bags in Ghana, we live with a sense of hope and inspiration. The artisans we have met, the experts we have spoken to, and the stories we have heard have shown us the beauty and richness of Ghana's cultural heritage. From the traditional method of the past to the modernization of the present, the future handmade bags in Ghana is bright. With a passion for their craft and determination to succeed, the artisans of Ghana are creating products that can compete with the best and we can't wait to see where their journey takes them next. <laughs> <laughs>